party the midnight summer away with fairies, druids, and all things mystical at the Mattress Factory's 2019 Urban Garden Party, Solstice, on Friday, June 21st. Feast and imbibe with some of the city's best restaurants and bars. Hit the dance floor with music by Beauty Slap, Bad Custer, and DJ Samuel Andres, and bid on one-of-a-kind works at the art auction. Tickets are on sale now at mattress.org. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. Guys, it's time to get geeky, get awesome. It is the Awesome Cast episode 449. If I have my math right, that means nine years of awesomeness on the internet in the podcast form. Uh, Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here in Pittsburgh, PA, in the Beachview neighborhood. Good to be back in beach viewing. And we got with us from the Big D, Dormont, PA, is John Chichilla. I'm going to continue doing that. The Big C and the Big D. That's right. Uh, let's let's not do the big C. Uh, <laughs> no, there was there was some some trucking company that was like big C something something, and I was like, man, you need to reconsider that name. Uh, but anyway, that's my trucking company. What are you saying about Chilla? My <laughs> uh, but anyways, uh, he's our, our gadget guru from Big Bank International Esquire, aka trucking company <laughs> slash trucking company. <laughs> That's that's why there's so much mobile tech because he's always on the road. You, yeah, right? you need the tech. We'll get it there. Man, man. Uh, also with us, he has not been on the show apparently since Christmas of 2017. <laughs> that's a very that's specific. Not true. You had to have been on. He was since in, then. He was in. No, he was in studio the one one night. Uh, it was a Christmas. In it was this the studio. No. Yeah, I'm 99 percent sure he was in that studio. Mm, we'll have to go through. We'll have to consult the notes and see. Uh, we'll go into the vast libraries of Awesome Cast lore and <laughs> the, Bobby, the Awesome Cast Chronicles. <laughs> Bobby Cherry, um, I don't know how to introduce you anymore because that's changed it's, since I first tried booking you this year. <laughs> it, it has. Uh, I am currently a senior editor um, at a digital newsletter company. Whoa! Yeah, that's a lot different than what you were doing before. <laughs> Surprise! That's a lot different than the last two things you were doing before. It is. <laughs> wow. Uh, so so emails, huh? Yeah. All right. Yeah. I think it, it, do I know the company? Don't I? Inside dot com. Do you uh, do you have the Pittsburgh I, newsletter? I do have the ins. I do know the inside. Our friend Kim Lyons also yes. a part of it. Yeah. Um, there might be some other things that may be happening with that. That. I don't know if I'm allowed to talk about it. <laughs> That's news to me. Yeah, just, yeah, uh, we'll tell you about that. I'll, we'll tell you that in the after dark. Anyways, uh, just in case. But uh, no, good to have you back on. Yeah, I'm excited. I wish I could have been here during my last job. As uh, Missy referred to it as my job baby. Is that what it job was? Job baby? What was your job baby? <laughs> well, so I worked for Hearst Television for exactly 10 months. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then, and then they, no, no, that's a bad joke. I'm not going there. <laughs> Thank you. And, and then this job came about and I took it. So I was a digital um, producer, digital content reporter for Hearst Television's National News Desk based out of WTAE here in Pittsburgh. But I reported on um, my stories and videos showed up on all like 30 of the Hearst Television um, websites. So like wow. WTAE.com, WESH.com, WCVB. So- Wow, I didn't realize that you had such a widespread job. I'm just like, it was so it, much easier to tell Pittsburghers I worked at WTAE. It well, was yeah, just easier. I mean, it, it is. It is. I mean, technically, you're in the building. Right. There's the giant sign out front. Right. 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 And and then like I just do just tell me you do like a really important global stuff at WTAE. Literally from August until November, I worked with Sally Wigan. So that's my. That's my takeaway from wow. ten months of that's Hearst. like yeah. that is that is a a, a, a career defining. 
<laughs> right? For her or me? Um, we'll leave that. We'll leave that to you guys. Uh, but wow. Anyways, uh, this is the awesome cast. Good to have you back on with us, talking awesome things. And uh, you can check out everything at awesomecast.com. By the way, thank you, uh, Katie and everybody, for doing the show, carrying the flag without me last week. Uh, I, I did listen to it on the way home from Detroit, um, and uh, and it was it was fun. It was fun to listen to a show I was not a part of for Awesome Cast. Uh, no, you guys did a great job there. Uh, again, I was listening because I was in a car, so visually, I hope it was okay. Every time I checked in, everybody was me, so um, that was great that uh, was but, purposeful that, I, I, figured, well, I actually did text missy i'm like hey is this title thing like a gag or did they did they forget uh so um so i i did i did want to confirm that just to be just to be uh uh sure but uh anyways <laughs> what the hell uh <laughs> are you applying to be a beach viewer missy is that what's happening you know who gets that right I do. And did you see the responses? I, I'm, I'm peeking at it. It's, I'm multitasking right now. Um, so something about my job is to tell people about Awesome Tech and the deliciousness of uh, Slice on Broadway pizza. There you go. Uh, anyways. You better work that in for our ad later. This is the Awesome Cast, awesomecast.com. Check out everything over there. Please subscribe and rate on your favorite podcast app. And you can watch video versions on Facebook or YouTube. Face, of course, the video version is all out of whack because of the sun in this giant window that we can never tackle. Uh, Bobby's in the in the shade. I should have put my uh, sunscreen on my legs, Maybe A little bit. <laughs> That's okay. It'll be gone in 20 minutes. Uh, and it's all over the place. Or the rain. It's, it's like Pittsburgh. I forgot how. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> it was nice and rainy yesterday. Uh, perfect for all podcasting weather. Uh, check out everything there. Uh, uh, tweet us at AwesomeCast uh, awesome on Facebook and the great Facebook group for AwesomeCast, um, where a lot of stories do come from. We do share and get some commentary from you guys out there. Also, uh, you, yeah, remember, you can ask your Google home or amazon echo to uh play the awesome cast on google music podcast or on the uh, uh on, on the tune in app whatever you may have connected for that uh, and you can check us out every tuesday uh, at 7 p.m eastern time on facebook uh on the awesome cast page thanks to our friends um the streaming partners rivers as pgh.com saturdays at 9 a.m and as well as um the 405 media.com that carry us weekdays at 9 a.m. Pacific time, noon Eastern time. Uh, that River's Edge is a Eastern, 9 a.m. Eastern time, by the way. I should probably state that. Um, and then my notes went away. There I are. There they are. Also, you can, if you want to be part of the uh, studio audience or if you want to advertise with us, check out Producer Missy. Um, check her out. Send her an email. <laughs> check, check in with her at awesomecast at sogertronmedia.com. And thank you to our Patreon supporters, patreon.com slash awesomecast. Matt Weller, John Diggy DeGore, and Jaron Carmen are uh, in... in, in are enjoying uh, special after dark privileges. That sounds weird, uh, but we usually record something after. I'll I'll ask Bobby Cherry some pressing questions like like what what does Sally Wigan smell like, uh, <laughs> or of some sort of some variety. And now you really want to tune in, and become part of the coffee club, right? And also at the fan of the show, one dollar level, our longest Patreon supporter, Michael Fedor. Thank you, everybody. You guys can support the show at patreon.com slash awesome cast so guys i've been traveling a little bit if you haven't been able to tell uh i was not here again last week because i was part of a kind of a back-to-back travel weekend of course i did baja in rochester over the weekend at, at rochester institute of technology which i know chilla you visited um that area just a few weeks ago right yeah pr- probably a couple months ago yeah i re- visited um the Institute of Technology and attached to the Institute of Technology is the National Technology Institute for the Deaf. Had a, had a good, so that's where I actually spent most of my time. Some good discussions with some people there at, uh, at RIT. And of course, it was the Baja event. Uh, and, and before that, we were at Auto Drive Challenge, which is an event. There's a highlight video now on the SAE Collegiate Desi- Design Series um, YouTube page uh, that you can check out. Uh, so it is... Basically, as somebody described it to me on my first day of it, this is what happens when uh, you give students a box of parts and make them try to make a car drive by itself. Oh, wait, this isn't my video. What we, oh, this is the other one where they use my footage. Okay. But still, this is this is dev- demonstrating uh, what's going on. This is actually, um, they, they, they used some of my footage for the Autoline um, series. Uh, so uh, they, they did some long form interviews with everybody. Uh, there's Chris with SAE that I talk with, and let's see a lot of interviews here. And there's some of the cars you can see behind them. 
Um, and I don't know where we're at now. Uh, but <laughs> so it, it was pretty cool. Uh, they had eight teams, eight cars. Um, uh, 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 one got hit by a deer. Um, <laughs> It's a video I'll show you guys uh, off air later. But um, it was a great event, and uh, it was, uh, you know, capped off with an award ceremony uh, that got to help stream over at the GM Heritage Center, which had a little bit of everything there. Like, we're talking, like, old Pontiacs and old, you know, old, 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 old uh, uh, cars um, there. But they, they did uh, bring in some stuff specifically for this. I got to see... This is a Carnegie Mellon GM Caterpillar. I don't know how many companies are on this thing. Um, this is the DARPA Tahoe, a Chevy, a Chevy Tahoe for the uh, DARPA AI challenge. And uh, I, I threw this again in the group. And I don't know why this is formatting so weird on here on my iPad. But um, there's a nice little uh, uh, look at the back end there um, under the hood. This was running, I think it said off the top of my head, uh, 10 Core 2 Duos uh, computers in, the, in those racks back there. Um, so basically like the equivalent of my 2007 iMac times 10. <laughs> was I was, was going to say, did they just like raid your studio for old scrap? <laughs> yeah, it seems like it. Well, this is like around 2005, I believe, 2007 maybe. And so like the Core 2 Duos were like probably the high end of the year uh, uh so of course you know 2019 these students are you know using intel parts and and uh, uh lidars and uh and they were given a uh, chevy bolt to uh use as the uh base car and they're uh, programming it uh, out of this so it was cool to kind of see the past uh based on just these are like students like doing this now and uh looking at the the hardware at the top is definitely you know a lot bigger cameras uh bigger lidar you know not you know Kind of a, a more feels more kind of scrapped together version of uh, of uh, what's going on with uh, AI cars now. So it was a pretty cool. It was it was something a little bit different uh, to be at rather than the dirty Baja and uh, dirty Baja. Dirty Baja. <laughs> and uh, and so for, uh, there you go, dirty Baja. Um, and uh, I'll be going out for Formula uh, next week as well. So, but I got to play with a couple of things. I, I you know there was an Intel rep there and and. And this was something, um, I, I don't know if you saw this post, Chilla, some of the facial uh, recognition. I know we've done stories about this kind of thing in the past, but the ones that will like, actually tell you, like interpret like how happy and sad you are, or as you walk up, it will tell you like that you're male, female, and, and approximate your age. It's like the, the is this a hot dog app? <laughs> way more intense yeah exactly um but then there was like like the object recognition as well uh it, it that was running off of a a, a a raspberry pi and they threw an intel neural neuro vision or neural net compute stick into the raspberry pi to offload all that computing for like the object wow. recognition stuff so um, it was like a heavy gp like Heavy GPU cords, like what's in that thing? Uh, yeah, I think it was something like that. He, he explained, dude. Dude got into some serious initials that I didn't understand. Uh, <laughs> it was, it was, it was pretty interesting. Um, but uh, yeah, so it was running that. They're running like you know a Core i7 laptop and uh, and you know that neural net stuff off of the Raspberry Pi. Uh, actually, here's a picture if you guys are on video of the neural net um, stuck into the bottom of the the Pi uh, in uh, neural compute stick two was the item that they were using. And the old, you know, the whole idea, they were like, hey, we're using a Raspberry Pi, this stick in this, like, kind of pretty general, obviously a little higher-end uh, laptop. Uh, and, and, you know, hey, this is the technology that you could be using for, you know, your cars that have, like, again, that compute system, specialized computer that everybody had in the back of their car. Dude, a lot of liquid cooling in the backs of these cars. So you have moving cars with computer parts and liquid cooling. So, um, no, so that, that's some of the awesome, uh, tech. I got, I got to be out there for five days and just like six days actually. And just kind of just, just, uh, uh learn more about AI cars and, and watch some of them in action. So that's pretty cool. Um, so with that, Chilla, what is your awesome thing? So I got some new headphones, as you may or may not see if you're watching the video. Hey, look at those new headphones. <laughs> or maybe you hear, because he sounds a little bit a little bit different than before. A little bit different. I'm interested in actually going like back to last week's recording and then going to this, this week's recording and then finding an old recording mm -hmm. from when I was at home just to, to kind of hear the difference. The key to this is, right, I'm going to like 
snap behind my back. You can't hear any of this behind me. Uh, and you can't hear my no. air conditioning running. Right. But so, you, so the noise cancellation on the mic for there not being a boom, there is no boom. The mic is like a small hole right here. Just in the bottom. Um, and, they, and they just like, they look like just over ear uh, headphones, wireless he- headphones. Yep. yep. So, and compared to what I normally rock, um, which has a, a giant microphone, still big can headphones. Mm-hmm. These ones are nice. They tell you which one's the right and which one's the left. Like in- um, inside the, the, the dome. Which is yeah, inside nice. the earpiece. Yeah, th- these I think it's on the left and right side. Mm-hmm. The interesting thing is also if I want to hear what's going on around me, I can turn this dial mm-hmm. on my left and I can hear it actually magnifies or yeah, it magnifies what's going on around me um, and pulls it through the microphones into the ear. And then this one controls the volume. Um, mm-hmm. And then to activate a voice assistant, if it's uh, on your phone, we're connected to a computer that had that that leverage is kind of an activatable voice assistant. Um, you can tap this side. The coolest feature to me of the this device is it will dual connect to multiple devices. Now you have my attention. And has intelligence on what's a phone call and what's playing and so here's 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 my use case. I go into work. I have these paired to my laptop. I have them paired to my phone. I can play a podcast on my phone and it comes through. If I get a phone call which comes through my laptop, the iPhone pauses the podcast. I can take the call. When I hang up the call, the podcast starts again. Okay. Two different devices, two different operating systems. My work laptops, a, a, a Windows device. My phone is obviously Apple. Um, I haven't tested it with my home Mac yet to take to do the same kind of thing. Um, but I, I'm fairly confident it's going to work. Okay. Um, so the ability, I, ultimately, right, I wish there was actually like dual channels and I had some kind of magic app that I could actually like do a mixer and do simultaneous playing. Um, so, but, so kind of like how I, I just wear earbuds underneath my cans when I want to listen to, um, like John Stewart on my iPad, but I'm I'm editing wrestling and want to just mildly hear the background noise. Yes. Yeah. That would be amazing, but um, no such luck at, at, at this point in time. And and for me, it's my computer for work's pretty locked down, so I can't do a lot of mm-hmm. things like get to a podcast or or get to to different like a a youtube video of something so i can watch something technical on youtube Mm -hmm. and if and do something on my computer like if i'm like transcribing or hey taking notes on something then if i get a phone call in the middle of that the phone pauses i take the phone call and i'm back to whatever i was doing so so these are the microsoft surface headphones they are 250 fifty dollar headphones so, They're normally three hundred and fifty dollars. There you go. It's still at two fifty. It's that or an Apple Watch, guys. <laughs> <laughs> or a, or a uh, I think one of their new uh, controllers for the Xbox is like one ninety nine. So you're like I would not be another surprised. 50, fifty bucks and you can get a get a set of headphones. Or instead. two subscriptions to Microsoft Stadia founders. Yes. <laughs> We'll get to that hopefully in a little bit. And if you had that, you could use these because they're Bluetooth. Well, there you go. There <laughs> you go. Bobby Cherry. Oh, and there is. I'm oh. sorry. One more thing. So there's there's also a, a microphone mute button on the side. Um, these charge over USB-C, which was super cool to me. And if you run out of juice, which there's a 15-hour battery life, if you run out of juice, you can. There is an, a head, typical headphone jack wire in addition to the USB-C wire. Mm. Hmm. I like it. Bobby Cherry, what is your awesome thing? So I think my awesome thing of the week is that um, Apple is making its corporate bring your own device policy less invasive for users so that you could take your iPhone to work and um, as long as your company, you know, buys into this program and use your personal Mac or iPhone 
versus having two devices or something like that, which I think is huge. Mm-hmm. A lot of people carry two phones. I've read, I've read into so many people that work with like, I will just say many car companies over the last couple of weeks or that I'm watching them juggle these things and they're talking like somebody went into their philosophy on like why I have several devices and that, you know, et cetera. But so, so that's awesome. So I'm trying to share the link with you, but it won't let me. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I mean, it, it's obviously, I mean, a lot of companies have been on board, mm-hmm. but this is part of their um, developers conference last week mm-hmm. that this will um, be introduced um, I guess this summer fall with with a more broad approach to to this and it will still remain so you could use like your company side and your personal side so that the two areas of your computer won't um, intermix so you don't have to worry about suggestive photos or whatever you might save on your personal side um coming to play it in a conference or anything like that Hmm. i'm I'm interested to see how they market this because this is has existed for since uh the uh, like mainstream since probably like the ipad 2 and iphone 3gs um, obviously the companies that built the BYOD like apps, um, it's kind of like a, a, an additional mail app that you have to help se- segregate that an additional browser. Um, I, I've, I've dedicated half my life to this technology. So I'm interested to see how Apple's playing this because Android did the same kind of thing and they, they introduced Android at work, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. which was kind of, the the guts of it were already there, especially on Samsung devices. Samsung had Knox, um, so it, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely interested. If you get the the link into the notes, Missy just uh, did. Oh, there Missy's it is. Awesome, less invasive. What's that? Your privacy. Oh, Missy just dropped the notes, the the link in the notes for us. Yeah, and this is over. At TechCrunch was talking about this. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay, so what it's doing is it's tearing out. It's giving you a second Apple iTunes account mm. right to allow them to so in the old days what you would do is you would align um i can't remember what the name of the, pro- the program was um but you would align a i could i could assign you applications to your id and if you left the, the corporation when you, when you disappear out of my user directory mm-hmm. all those applications then get pulled back from the user ID. Um, so this kind of gives you greater degree of separation, but now I have to manage two iMessage accounts. I have to man- I'm be interested to see how they play this. That's what I'm wondering with, you know, the two different accounts, how that plays into maybe podcasts you download, where do those get stored? Um, those kinds of things. You know, if you're, if you're switched into your corporate account, what if I want to access something that's on my my personal? So yeah, I'll, it'll be interesting to see. I don't have to worry about that, but I know a lot of people in my in a, in two jobs ago I had to worry about that, but <laughs> not now. Uh, your journey, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be interested to see how that works out. I'm glad that uh, well, basically my business is my life, so it all goes together. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, hey, uh, speaking of my business, uh, we do a lot of stuff here. Hey, like I said, I was running from I was running uh, uh, from across town to do this show from doing another podcast with uh, some friends of ours. I guess I can mention because we did we did complete social media. Uh, I, we were kicking off recording for season two of Innovation Works Caffeinated uh, Innovation. Uh, they did season one internally, and uh, they, they talked to us about uh, doing it and take, handling the services for them. So we're kicking that off, and that's part of what we're doing here at Sidekick Media Services, uh, working out of uh, Sorgatron Media here. You can check it out at SidekickMediaServices.com. Everything from sporting events to music video productions. Maybe you've seen some of the Nick Ivan stuff on our Sorgatron Media feeds as well. Uh, we have everything in between social media, uh, so much more. Like I said, the Baja events that we've been to in auto drive and doing interviews and highlight videos for those as well. Websites, social media, our team here, uh, myself, Missy Dutters doing some really fun projects with a lot of cool people out there. Go check out everything at sidekickmediaservices.com. Uh, where your side, we, we can be the sidekick 
to your superhero project. Go check it out and uh, see if we can help you do this thing. Uh, but uh, do your thing, actually. So over on the Facebook group, there's a lot of stories that popped up this past week. And I'm going to pull them up in just a moment when my keyboard actually catches up with my fingers. Uh, so there was one that Podner shared. Of course, there was a lot of iOS stuff. Did you talk a lot of the iOS updates last week, Chilla? I'm trying to remember from the listen. I think you did get into yeah, it pretty I think, deep. We, I think we each we each took one. I think we even covered uh, the new Mac Pro on your behalf. Mm-hmm. We, we, we anticipate a rack of them behind you. Oh, geez. Sometime soon. If only, um, if only, man, I was, uh, it was the other, Alex Lindsay, uh, mess- messaged one of the Mac podcasts and said, um, how many can I mortgage my house for? You know? <laughs> so, um, but, uh, he, he was, he was pointing out, uh, one feature it says, uh, he doesn't have a green screen and he hasn't tested it, but since the program is no additional cost, picture in picture ability with new soundtracks available. This is an iMovie iOS update that now includes green screen capabilities. Hey guys, I remember green screen screening way back in, oh, let's say 2007. And I remember like tweaking these nodes and doing this stuff and, and, and this crazy stuff. And then now um, my wife can take her phone shoot wrestling promos against a more or less green wall, and I am able to pull off half-decent keys with two buttons on my Final Cut Pro. Um, Also, now iMovie on your phone or iPad can completely pull this off, as Podner is pointing out here. Um, And, of course, he's going to watch this stuff because he's part of the Tiny Shutter podcast to give him a little bit of plug uh, there. So this is is the kind of stuff... um, Oh, what was the app that we were talking about before? Pod, Podcaster would do stuff like this. But you're telling me that it's like, you know, but it's more of a live streaming kind of situation. So new green screen effect, 80 fresh soundtracks, and so much more. Um, I, you know, I've been purposely trying to do more in iMovie. Wait, I have, I, have to, I have to step back there. What's that? Was that 80 fresh soundtracks or 80s fresh soundtracks? <laughs> no. <laughs> That would be awesome if it was. You know what? My brain did the same. Fresh soundtrack. Yeah, my 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 brain did the same when I read it. So I think that's why I put a little inflection on it. Um, But I mean, this is a powerful tool, and when you're throwing this on something like an iPad Pro, like it becomes even more powerful. I I did. um, I I still get likes and stuff from it. We did a uh, a highlight video for a wrestler uh, named Lady Frost, a friend of the show. Uh, friend of the network shows here and uh and and that was something that i did the core editing on my ipad because it's just what i had on a trip and when i get started with it i pulled the clips down and we already had some of the clips lined up or something right so i did all the general like hey here's all the highlights so said hey you know so i had something to kick to her to say Mm -hmm. do you like how this looks as far as the moves that i used the highlights that i used then I was able to render that out, kick it over to Final Cut, put some effects on it, like do some higher end stuff on there. That's really powerful. I mean, I, mean, I, 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 I use hope- iMovie a lot in when I worked for a local media here. Mm-hmm. On the go, you're at a so scene of a story, do. and you yeah. edit it quickly, add a couple lower third graphics, and you can if you don't need much, post it. Yeah. Um, if you look at the Beachview Revitalization uh, Advisory Group. Um, just about every video that I put up there is like, you know, something's happening down the street. I'll shoot it with my phone, mm-hmm. edit it real quick, throw music down, down under it. It's out. Yep. It, you know, that's it. You know, and that's all anybody wants, you know, for something like that. Uh, Chiller? I'm, I'm hoping they add, because I know in the Photos app, they've started to add crop and rotate to video. Mm-hmm. That's one. Of, and, and, and maybe I'm just not figuring out how to do it on the iPhone mm-hmm. in iMovie. But that's one of the features I'm hoping either comes to there or I could, I guess, pre, pre-crop pre and rotate the video and photos before I import it into iMovie. Because mm-hmm. sometimes you get those people that shoot like they're on doing Instagram um, or Snapchat, and I need it in a more 16 by 9 format. So that's the one thing I'm hoping. I, I'm. It's nice to see that they're at continuing to add to iMovie. I hope they continue down that path 
which is interesting because how will they continue to show the gap between uh, Final Cut for the for the Final Cut newbies mm -hmm. um, to get you kind of over the hump if they continue to add. I tell you, man. Some of the, but that brings the, in a good point of of the iPad becoming more closely related to the MacBook. Mm -hmm. You know, who? Why? Why do I need to jump onto my MacBook to edit a movie? Right. Add on to that the USB support that we're getting, like file system USB support, uh, and uh, iPad OS. Um, you know, you're able to. I, I can I can go to a wrestling show, and and let's say I can, you can get an SD adap card adapter, right? Is it, uh, for for your iPad? Mm -hmm. You know, I can have that because mm -hmm. I already have a million dongles because I have a new uh, MacBook. Um, so why, what's one more? Um, but I can slap in my my SD card from my canon import it and start like pulling clips in imovie hmm. like, that's crazy that's crazy so, so, so and if you're really crazy like me mm -hmm. you have one of these oh yeah they, they, so the, the, Which, I, it's so it's USB C for the new ipad pro yes and then it's <laughs> USB C usb hdmi headphone jack oh microphone. man so yeah i can do and Help. then I can actually plug, I've plugged a USB hub into this with like a Ethernet jack and like all kinds of, you remember we had the dongle connection the one day? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you can, you can, now you can do stuff like this, which is pretty, pretty nice. Yeah. So it can become, plus your, your, your mouse support, it can very easily mm -hmm. become your computer in the long run. So Bluetooth microphone, a Bluetooth mouse you're and, and there's you're still the races. there's still there's still a headroom there like there's still you're gonna bounce your head against if, if you want to do x kind of video right um mm -hmm. i'm not gonna do my green screen music video with nick Iben on my ipad that's just not there yet no it's it just it's just right. there, i could do it but it's gonna be more complicated to do it um there's well this... you're gonna store it you're gonna store all those clips in icloud and then you're gonna just remote <laughs> desktop back to your mac that's right exactly uh <laughs> Jeez. I mean, that's kind of what you do right now anyway. Yeah, sometimes it is kind of what I do. But um, here's, here's, here's my question, mm -hmm. though. Is this something that Apple is trying to kind of do for kind of the upgrade for, for storage space on a device? Because you get the option of, oh, well, you, you have, you know, the, the mid-grade size but if you're going to be doing anything with video, you're going to want to get you're going to want to get the. Well, the well yeah, one. yeah. And we're talking about still a thousand dollar iPad Pros at this point, right? And that that number is going to go up. And we do have the mid range now. Uh, you know, with these updates, you can say like like, hey, we don't have a five hundred dollar Mac. No, we have an iPad, and you can do half what, the stuff. What will be interesting, and, I, and I'm guessing they may or may not let you. I'm guessing you're not you're going to be able to read from that storage, and you're going to be able to write back to that storage. But for something like video editing, are they going to let you edit direct on that storage? Or is it going to import it to a local area and then export it back? Mm -hmm. I think for a Word document or something like that, it's not as bad or not as the potential for someone to pull the, the SD card or whatever off the device. Mm -hmm. I think they also have to think about the mounting and dismounting of that media in the middle of editing i i don't think the user population that'll be doing this in like an iMovie are going to be as mindful about oh i'm in the middle of editing an iMovie it's in the background oh i need to get up and go somewhere right, else right. I'm just what, gonna what happens there yank, yank that drive right out of the yeah. bottom of the ipad it'll be interesting to see and then there's gonna be some growing pains with that about how these do you know things how the operating system is going to handle these situations right so, yep. uh, Matt Weller, our friend and Patreon supporter, uh, he, I, I feel like we may have brought this up, um, and, and he wasn't sure either, but he wanted to bring up if, if we hadn't, uh, be my eyes. It, it's an app, uh, for your smart device. Um, you can check out be my and uh, get links to download. Um, this is an app that's helping people with a lower, um, low vision, uh, how do I say? Uh, bringing sight to blind and low vision people. Is this the one that Katie was talking about? I feel like it might be. So, it, it connects you with low vision people. Uh, it connects low vision people with sighted volunteers and company representatives for visual assistant 
through a live video call. So basically you call up and say, you know, what is in front of me or, you know, you know, what, what, what is this, you know, or, or, Hey, I need a hand. And somebody pops up can see, you know, use the camera on your phone and say, yeah, you're like, you know, don't, don't drink that poison. Uh, you know, or whatever. I, I don't know. Uh, but uh, 2 million, over 2 million volunteers for this. This is the impressive part. And 132,000 blind and low vision um, individuals. That is great. 150 plus countries, 180 languages. We talked about this before. I think it's before we had these kinds of stats on it, right, Missy? Yeah, because I, th- I don't think there was this much information available last time no, we checked. No, we're, we're still kind of figuring out how they were going to do it. And if it was, it was even, I guess, kind of realistic. Um, but that's really cool. Be my eyes.com. If you want to go check that out and what they're doing over there and, and potentially become a volunteer, I believe. So, um, so go check that out. Thanks Matt for, uh, passing that along. And then we had, let's see, I think we had one more, sorry, we did, I did not have too much time to get together with the, uh, the notes here, uh, this time around, but Brandon sent us a video here. Oh, photography now. It'd, it'd be funny if it was like the YouTube or the awesome cast live feed. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I saw, I saw this video oh, and I God, like me, half cried and half cringe. Me too. What, me too. what, 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 what are we looking at here? <laughs> oh. I, I'm just pulling it up now. What are we looking at here? Chilla? It's so bad. Oh no, this was, yeah, this fellow, this is just a cringer for you guys. It's just awesome. He's setting up a green screen and he has his, his, uh, oh, DSL camera on the ledge. And it gets pushed off and down a flight of steps, and he's just and you can see like the thing like start like pieces fly off. Yeah, pieces and have definitely flown off. That thing is not okay. That thing is definitely not going to be okay. Oh, 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 oh! There it goes. Oh no! You see that roll? I just noticed the part rolling into the corner too. <laughs> oh no! We've been there. I've smashed the screen. I've dropped the you know had recently bought like one of these uh, uh, three chip cameras, kind of like what we have here. And uh, uh, dropped it and broke the screen. Like, and then I had to use the viewfinder. Thankfully, I had a viewfinder. Uh, so we've all been there, man. To some extent. Uh, but <laughs> thanks, Brandon, for making us cringe for that one. I think he should. I thought he shared that in the wrestling one. That's why I got confused. But hey, speaking of our friends in the creative services, maybe he'll be doing some work on his iPad. AlexCars.media. K A H R S dot media putting together a puzzle of design and media from branding to print digital projects he can do logos merchandise websites even photo and video projects go check them out at alexcars.media uh for more information uh great great individual out there alex out there in california get to hang out with him the last couple of months when i've been doing my california trips for uh the business and uh he's got some cool stuff he's working on out there all right let's get into the back of the book here uh with these stories uh so uh, let's stick on the Apple. We were just talking about Apple a little bit here. Shelly, you got a couple stories about iCloud and the xCloud serve? Oh, wait. Actually, no. That's, that's X- Xbox. XCloud's Microsoft. Tell me yeah. about the cloud. Tell me about this cloud, Shilla. So, I got, yeah, I got two articles. We'll start with the, the xCloud first because it is E3. Mm-hmm. And I did not pick a video game topic for my awesome thing of the week. I'm sure we'll I have it next Microsoft week. Thing, but. Yep. But um, so Microsoft announced, started to announce their xCloud offering, which is like their version of Stadia, where you're going to be able to stream your games direct from their cloud to any mobile device, any operating system. I've, I've heard rumblings that this could even come to something like the Nintendo Switch. What? So if you had so if you had a like their Game Pass Elite. Where you could where right now you download the games to the Xbox and there's always a hundred game revolving library. Um, you could potentially stream these to any device. Um, and there was a time that they actually compared the latency between um, Stadia and uh, xCloud. And to put it in perspective, and I, I'm not going to get into, you know, whose was faster, but um, from an from an X or how much faster it was, but to just to explain the latency, so X Cloud exhibited sixty seven milliseconds of input lag. That means that when you hit a button on the controller, mm-hmm. it takes three 
frames for that button to register on the screen. In, this is where the fun part is, three frames in a 240 frame per second video game. Whoa! <laughs> not a 30 second frame per no. second. 30 no, frame per not second. 30 frames per second. At 240 frames per second, it takes three frames to register your. your so tap at that click. point, it is going to be mostly unintelligible for yep. you to notice any difference in light. Well, here's the funny part. So if you played, if you were playing Halo Five directly on the console, mm-hmm. it's 63 milliseconds of input. Wait, light. wait, wait. <laughs> So, and so this, it's, this, it's this five is... milliseconds different running through the cloud. And this test was done on a server that was 400 miles away. Jeez. And when you think of Microsoft's Azure platform, those servers are all over the place. Yeah. You're, you're not always 400 miles away, but you're pretty darn close to a cluster at any given point. Yeah. The cooler thing I thought about this was if you don't want to pay for this service, you can use the Xbox at your house as a roll your own X cloud server. So basically anything on your Xbox, you're going to be able to play from whatever devices are going to be compatible with your PC, your mobile device. But it, but it's going to go back to your house. But it's to your house. So for, but it, so for you and me, for no cost, for zero cost. For zero cost. Yep. So you'll be able to tap into your Xbox. So this is kind of like um, stream, Steam has a thing where if you, I have a PC sitting over here, it can run all the games. And I can go, I have a thing on my TV, I have a slower laptop in the house, and I can do Steam Connect in the house on the Wi-Fi. This is extending beyond that, and it's going yes. over internet. Interesting. Yeah, for, And for me and you, I'm sure it's going to be fine, because we have nice 100 gig fiber. Yeah. Um, for for those people still on their 56K X2 modems, I, they may have a little bit of a so, problem. But. So my Xbox lives here. Mm-hmm. This is its home. Uh, <laughs> I don't so have you'll an be fine plan from your unlimited data plan on AT and T. There's that, so I can sit at my house on my AT and T data plan and play Halo Five there or Mortal Kombat Eleven or whatever I want. So now I've closed the gap because I'm like, man, I wish I had my Xbox One at home as well. Should because I get? Because another- don't forget, in in the next version of iOS, you're going to be able to connect any PlayStation or Xbox controller directly oh, to it. Oh, it all comes together. Okay. All right. Um, let's talk about, while we're there, Stadia. Uh, Bobby Chair, have you, have you, are you aware of the Stadia situation? Not really. So please okay. fill me in. So you're going to be the, you're going to be the guinea pig on okay. here as we explain to you. Okay. Imagine, and, and help me with any details, Chilla, as I go through this. So we, you know, and like we've been talking about where it's, it's cloud game. It's going to be on Google service servers, right? So they're doing, you know, much like this X cloud is going to do right. on Microsoft. They're like, they're going to just render everything and basically just send you video. And the idea is, you know, you're on your controller. You, it will happen so fast over the internet. We're presuming you have a 35 uh, megabyte connection. <laughs> so um, for, for 4k content, um, you can you can get down to like ten. You'll be okay with seven twenty. Um, I, I have I have like a I have like I don't I have no four K TVs. This is your, but anyways, yeah. But but if you look at the resolution on your iPad, that's true. I'm guessing that's it's, true. It's, it's above ten eighty. Yeah, it's definitely above ten eighty. It's but it's probably below four K. It's probably yeah. I was in my retina UHD. my retina laptop and everything like that. But anyways, so they have that, and basically you don't need anything to play. Um, other than your computer and a connection, right? You don't even need a computer. You barely need a computer at this point because you can. You're going to be able to use the controller with the Chromecast, aren't you? Yeah, uh, yeah uh, with the uh, Chromecast Ultra. So you can plug a Chromecast yeah. Ultra, which is a sixty dollar, seventy dollar device. Right. Plug it in your TV. Log into this thing. Now you okay? Well, you you will need their controller to do this. Yep. Their controller is special because instead of like coming into your computer and then that goes out. You put the controller on your Wi-Fi directly, so it is the controller has a direct connection. You don't have to use their controller, but it's going to be a little faster, technically. Right. It will connect directly that way. Um, so now you have that connecting. You have your Chromecast connecting, and you're able to play games. You can purchase games, um, I think, but you're not allowed to get 4K until 
you're not allowed to get 4K until you're dropping like ten dollars a month on the on the pro plan, right? Something I like that. I, I, I didn't get that deep into it. Yeah, that I'm a little confused on the plan because there was a ten dollars a month. I thought it was going to be like a, a Xbox Live where like some games are included and this, and there are free games if you get the Founders thing for like 130, you get three months Destiny to the controller and a Chromecast. Which doesn't sound too bad compared to a console price, right? Sure. But also, I could wait for it to come out and just not get the 4K version, maybe buy a game on their service, and just play it in my browser. That's honestly what I was thinking. I mean, my concern with just hearing what, you're, what you've explained. So, I go back to the days of, of EA when they were, trying, they, have, they were trying to start getting games streamed like that and i look at like the sims and sim city two of right. the games i play and you had to have an internet connection right. to play them so right. if i'm in the middle of nowhere and i don't have wi-fi i wasn't able to connect to the games and a lot of people right. were upset at that so yeah. that's what i look at if i'm in a maybe a hotel that doesn't have the strongest signal or the power goes out and I don't have Wi-Fi, but I have nothing else to do but, you know, play But a game. I don't think, but I, I think, look at it this way. Would you be dragging your Xbox One with you? No. You could. You, you could. You could. So, I mean, I, I think, I think, I don't think it replaces that. Now, people that don't have great internet. But people do take their Switch. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. Um, but now, ideally, um, and this will not work on cell. This is Wi-Fi only. Um, the, like they said, so like the Pixel Three is like t- the, t- oh, t- good. Oh, we lost them. We lost them. Oh, no. We can't even get a signal to Dormont. <laughs> oh no! How are we gonna play Stadia games? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, no, this is not, and this is not for you know. This is for this is for the technologically accessible people. Right, right. right. You can as low as a ten megabyte per second. You can get seven twenty gaming. Right. Which, for some, that's enough. It is. That is honestly probably enough for a lot of people. But if you're, like, super, like, I'm a person that gets that, um, you know, that Xbox One X, you know, that has the 4K. Right. Now you're looking at it this way. Also, you probably have Fios and, and whatever and, and stuff like that, right? So um, what this does in practicality, I think PlayStation is doing this streaming stuff right now. But I don't think anybody else is doing it to a great effect. Um, there was a test about uh, maybe a year ago where they're like, hey, guys, go play the new Assassin's Creed in a Chrome browser. That was their stress test. And it worked. And it looks like it looked it, it looked great from, from the things that I had heard. I mean, I could be swayed. I keep my Chromebook with me almost all the time. So That's all you need. You could be playing Mortal Kombat 11 or right. the new Assassin's Creed on your Chromebook. Right. On your Chromebook. That's crazy. That's amazing. Um, I mean, I, I do know that apparently Google did not have a presence at E3 this year. No. I, well, many are not. Sony is not. Nintendo has not had uh, for True. a while. Right? Um, so, the, I mean, this this is... The landscape is changing. One, nobody wants to go to E3. Also, everybody's going to stream, um, and maybe you won't need a console next generation. Ooh. That's... I don't right? know. That's where we're at. It is where we're like, at. What if, what if, what if I don't have to get this box and invest in this thing? All I need is my Chromebook and I'm playing. You, you got to think this thing is going to play. You know, they just announced a new console that's going to have like Halo 5 or whatever, right? Which I imagine is going to be an extension of how we had a one uh, Xbox One X and then we have the next one. And again, I didn't watch the, uh, the thing. I, I'm not sure the details there. Um, and hopefully we can get Chilla back so he can tell me the details. Um, but you get Stadia and start start. You know, maybe you bu- drop seventy dollars for the controller, and you're playing this year's Assassin's Creed. Three years from now, when uh, the PlayStation Six is that where we're up to? Uh, four, five, six. Where are we at right now? I don't know. It's just I can't remember. Six or seven. This is where I'm at right now. <laughs> um. The I the eight um whatever um when that comes out like you're already ready because like Google was already pushing the higher content right. from the next generation right it's it's like PC gaming but without having to invest another fifteen hundred dollars in a, in upgrades to your PC or or buy a Mac Pro <laughs> so, what was it does it start at six thousand dollars was that right 
the the Mac, the Mac Pro yeah. starts at six thousand dollars. That's the that's the other thing. So, um, how did we knock the internet out on a clear blue sky day in Dormont? How is that, Chilla? Is is that how they're finding out? Is our cloud not working? Is the sword cloud not working today, Chilla? It's interesting because it wasn't it wasn't the internet. No, I don't think it, it was my 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 entire MacBook. Oh no! Froze. Oh no! <laughs> Oh no! So I don't know if it was. I, I I will say that in the background, like I got a insider build from Office updating, and then I may I may be getting a Mac OS beta at the same time. Like, <laughs> so I don't. Yeah, I don't know what happened. All right, but I I apologize because what I was saying was, and I've done this purposefully to get around hey you can't use lte for these services okay. so what you do is you, you carry around like one of those little um apple airport expresses or anything that can repeat a wi-fi signal mm-hmm. or like one of those little linksys hey extend the wi-fi in your house type things mm-hmm. so you take you, you take your phone and you say hey i'm going to do internet connection sharing and then you take that repeater device and you say hey repeat my wi-fi wi-fi signal and then usually those those devices that will repeat wi-fi then register to any device as hey this is just everyday internet in someone's house oh and by the way here's an ethernet port for you to plug into (laughs) (laughs) because i've I've powered it like uh mobile displays Mm -hmm. that we needed to prototype something for uh, that needed an internet connection i've i've done that with with a couple devices and a power strip. Talk to me when you can get around my 10, 10 gig limit for uh, hotspots at at t Oh, okay. Yeah, that's, that's I where I'm I at. haven't run into that. If it's streaming directly to my phone, we good. We good. Or or my iPad, we're good. But uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens there. No, I think it's very interesting. I think the idea, I think this brings, and we've, we've talked, we've had people on here uh, before. We've, we've talked about like that possibility of, I don't have to have hardware, you know, gaming as a service kind of idea. And it's probably going to take Google to get in, in Xbox to get that over. So also interesting. Um, there is an ultimate plan, a, a, an Xbox ultimate plan that is going to include the game pass for PC and Xbox, which is going to be revolving hundred games for each $10 a piece for one for PC, one for Xbox, plus your, xbox live which includes like five games a month that you uh get to download um for 15 dollars a month that is considerable <laughs> sir to like play probably more recent games than i'm playing like that's you know i feel like the only my only gripe with that is is the revolving so how long right keep... true like if i join and there's only two months left on some game and i don't can't play it for multiple hours per week, I'm going to be kind of bummed out. It's a Netflix for gaming. It is. Yeah. It really is. What, what was the one where you could, it was like the back before Netflix was streaming, there, there was the Netflix that was like the, it was a game service where they actually shipped you the disc. And just like Netflix, you could have oh, up to two discs. Out yeah, no, I remember that. It was a game. Oh, was it Gamefly? Gamefly. Gamefly. Okay. Yeah, Gamefly was everything, man. That was great. Those were the days. That was experimental. Whenever we had this, I, I didn't think, man, there's no way GameFly is still around. Hold on a second. You know what? <laughs> Actually, GameFly could completely still be around because you know. Just, I don't see why I couldn't. I mean, Redbox is still a crazy big thing, right? Uh, Netflix mm-hmm. actually does do a lot of disc stuff. Uh, GameFly, GameFly still ran there. over nine thousand games and movies. There it is. Wow, they got everything. If, hey, you can, I can get my Xbox 360 games. I can still get DVDs. Then I can also get Nintendo Switch, Xbox One. And by the way, it is the PlayStation 4 currently out. Okay. Oh, <laughs> wow. You and I were wrong. <laughs> Whatever it is. Um, you can go all the way back to the Game Boy Advance and GameCube on wow. GameFly. Wow. Really? Mm-hmm. That's crazy. I was excited to be um, the, uh, a couple years ago. Um, the library has video games now. Did you know that? Yeah. Carnegie Library has recent video games. Uh, Xbox One video games and stuff. So. Oh, wow. I yeah. didn't know that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They've had them here in uh, Beachview for a while. I, I picked up a couple of them when I first got uh, 
Actually, it might have been on my 360. I might have grabbed them. I for. think some of the suburban libraries do too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's all it's all the same. Like if it's Allegheny County Alleg- libraries. Yeah, you yeah. can probably get anything from anywhere. Um, she has just Game Pass. Now, now I'm looking at Game Pass because I'm kind of curious. <laughs> As if I have time for video games. What's well, got Halo and Batman on there? I got plenty of just Sorg. sitting on my shelf. You might not have time for video games, but do you know what you do have time for? I love pizza. Is that the transition? Yes, Was it that is. what's happening? Yes, it Supporting is. Supporting Pittsburgh Podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza. Our friends at Slay on Broadway here in Beachview right up the street. Carnegie, PA, East End, and PNC Park home of the Pittsburgh Pirates. It's baseball season, right? Isn't it? Is it baseball season? Like, <laughs> that's it, what they tell me. Is that, that's what they <laughs> tell me. There's that'll be that sports ball is happening at PNC Park across the river. And uh, and everybody, whether you, whatever you think of that sports ball, at least there's some good pizza that you can watch your sports ball with. There you go. Pizza exclamation point. <laughs> yes. If you like the slice, drop me a pizza emoticon in the slack, ladies, in the, in the slack, not in the slack, in, my, in the chat, ladies and gentlemen. Slack me some pizza. Uh, so uh, if you're hungry for pizza, drop me an emoticon. But anyways, uh, check out our friends, SliceOnBroadway.com. They've been supporting us for a good a long time here on The Awesome Cast. All right, where are we at for time? Oh, that's where we're at for time. Um, we didn't really get into much else. <laughs> we didn't really get into much else here, Chilla. Um, but uh, uh, one more story. One more story here. What do you want to? What do you want to grab out of this, Bobby? Was there anything in the in the uh, group or in the uh, doc that you wanted to hit? Nothing really. The uh, you know what the Amazon Suburbia thing kind of is intriguing. The little robot three D thing. Yeah, because I'm thinking of neighborhoods without sidewalks. Um, what's it going to do? Just sort of roll along the street? Well, let's let's. Uh, so the headline is that um, uh, Amazon is creating detailed. Uh, uh, 3D models of suburbia to train the delivery robots. And those are those little six-wheeled guys that you saw rolled down the way. Um, so, I mean... I thought they were going to use drones. Uh, well, they're, they're, well, they're working on everything. Right. They're working on everything. It depends <laughs> on where you're at, okay? Like, some places... Listen, some neighborhoods, they're going to shoot down the drone. And other neighborhoods, like Philadelphia, Philadelphia is not getting the little six-wheeled guy, okay? Because they already killed that one robot that was hitchhiking across America. If you don't get it, Philadelphia, you're done, Philadelphia. Um, but anyways, now people are on looking as I'm getting angry at Philadelphia outside the window. It's okay, really, it's here's, just, <laughs> here's my question. How are those poor little things going to do with the hills and streets of Pittsburgh? Well, right. there you go. Well, I think I think they'll be fine. Wait, that's where the drones. Oh my goodness! Here. When the when the Mon War floods, <laughs> or <laughs> you just see <laughs> drones and little Amazon bots floating down the river. Or imagine if the directions take it up a street that's actually a set of stairs. Yeah, yes. as they do here, <laughs> as they do. Right. Oh, construction. Maybe that's where the drones come in, so the drones can swoop in and save them from the flood. <laughs> or if they need to get up a steep pair of steps, oh. the drone swoops in, picks the robot up, gets it to the top of the steps, oh. and then flies off to help the next the next robot. The other question so that they, I have they work in partnership. Delivery assistant drones. Like a sequel to oh Wally right there. I mean, I think this is how we got the Wally. <laughs> well, the, the other question that I have here is: Is this going to account for construction? Because yeah, but you're not going to. Oh yeah. Even for sidewalks, like just random. Right. I mean, yeah. I don't, I don't envision these things flying down to 376. No, 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 no. not 376. <laughs> but like <laughs> here, thing, the, they're they're redoing the the side part along Broadway here, right. so they have mm-hmm. it completely like closed down, mm-hmm. and they have parts of the sidewalk closed as well. So how would they adjust to that sort of thing? Yeah. Your yeah. your deliveries. You're gonna get a notification. Your deliveries. <laughs> your delivery is stuck. <laughs> three and a half months. Until the sidewalk, your uh, your delivery fell into a pothole. <laughs> yeah. um, Can you go pick it up for us? Yeah, yeah. Here's a here's a here's a uh, a satellite picture of where it landed. No, here's <laughs> no, 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 no. What it's gonna do is kind of like what what you get with um, your Amazon delivery sword when you get the photo of our neighbor's porch <laughs> where they've left our. Pro- oh our yeah, parcel. oh I love that when they leave the so, picture and you're just like, that's not my porch, but I think I recognize it. So these little these little robots are gonna have these little picture taken, and it's gonna take a picture of a pothole that it's stuck in. <laughs> <laughs> like this is where I've delivered the package because this is now where I live. <laughs> mm-hmm. I, I I mean I don't know if they're testing them here, but I feel like they probably should. At least give them a chance here first, piloting them before they 
branch them out to other places. But but thinking of even but again back to suburbia, there aren't sidewalks in a lot of suburbia. It's just developments with with roads and driveways, and and when there are sidewalks, there's holes and cracks and and things that just aren't great for a normal person walking. So how is a six wheeled little Amazon little guy? Well, gonna... the whole point again of the story is that they're creating detailed 3D models of suburbia to train. So so if we get back into the article, I, I didn't get this deep into it. I apologize. <laughs> so we get it in. First of work. all, check out the rotating six wheel action they do have there. Um, they, they, you know, they are creating the different services that surfaces that they're, we're talking suburbia. We live in the city guys. You I know. Don't. We're talking like Swinkly or something. I don't know. Uh, you know, there, here is, here's a multi-surfaced <laughs> sidewalk that they have to train the guy on. Okay. All right. That's cool. But again, flat surface. There's uh, no cracks. There's no tree. There's no tree roots. But there's... they're, they're making, yeah, there's no tree. Root. Look, there's a bush. There's a bush. It's a well manicured yeah, bush. A bush. Like, it, I mean, it does not look like my neighborhood. It's just you're really admiring that bush. Uh, there's a you know there's these ramps. There's these um, uh, fake grass. <laughs> so so this is so they're they're putting them through their paces. They're creating this, and I'm sure there is some. I'm sure there is like, what do I do? Or where is the like super vertical Pittsburgh San Francisco model, right? Um, that's what you do. There, there has to be some kind of like lidar built into this. That yeah, if yeah. it does the either a break in the sidewalk or or construction where it can have some semblance of oh, I need to go across the street. You can't and... tell me Amazon isn't mapping. Apple has, and they surprised everybody when they came out with their new uh, feature on the Apple Maps, mm -hmm. right? Of their mm -hmm. of their look around, right. they they're, they were using lidar to three right. D generate and identify the door on buildings to say go around to the side. That's where the entrance is, not just just random splotch in the middle of a block because it's a freaking warehouse or something that I'm trying to go to a, a pitch contest to go watch or film or whatever so this is not something that happens in pittsburgh uh so you know but but like that kind of thing like identifying identifying signs like that like just like super detailed thing um so i mean it's it's there's a lot happening that we don't know well like will, will it get me there and get me the item in one day like they're now promising and man it, it, it's getting there or, or, or the day of right I mean, between that whole foods when uh, Jeff Bezos isn't getting hounded by chicken li chicken liberators, um, did you hear about that? No. He was uh, some, doing some QA speech thing, and um, somebody from the Chicken Liberation Front, because they own Whole Foods, started yelling at him about what they're doing to the chickens. So what happens you buy multiple companies? Then you have to deal with all the problems <laughs> of multiple companies. I think he can deal with that. I think I don't. I think he doesn't even care. Probably not. about the plight of the chickens, unfortunately. <laughs> um, but he has people to do that for. <laughs> but anyways, he was talking about what was it delighting your customer when it went down too. Um, but <laughs> that guy's not delighting. Uh, anyways, Bobby Cherry. Yes. Thank you so much for joining us. I hope you had fun. I always have fun. I hope here. it's not a year and a half before we have you back. I hope not. Too. I hope that's not the yeah. case. Well, now, now you're not at a place where now i can come work from here you can work from here you yeah. absolutely can we have desk space absolutely pull off a swatch you can hang you can hang in that or all right point of clarification when was the last time that bobby cherry was here I so don't... i thought it was Dece december or november 2017 is that no is i'm 99 percent sure he's you were here Mars. sometime in 2018 you had definitely to definitely find out because i really don't think so oh man this is gonna happen We'll 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 quiz we'll quiz, we'll quiz him about it next time. You know um, what? Hmm? He is correct. No way. He well, is correct. Give me a Tuesday in in July. Okay. And we'll just have you back. <laughs> no, we talked about him on a couple of different shows in 2018. I had to postpone both of them because of work. One was some sort of breaking news. I think the president was speaking or something. Mm. And I forget what the other <laughs> one was. But I think we were going to have you on sometime around May. Because we yep. were talking about the fact that you weren't here. Mm -hmm. And we named the we named the show BobbyCherry.app. Because of whatever we were talking about. <laughs> that seems right. So you were here in, you were here in spirit. Okay, well, thank yes. you. Yes, I appreciate that. 
fantastic all right guys thank you so much uh oh wait wait where can bobby cherry be found on the on the internet <laughs> and and where and the things that bobby cherry is doing so, so bobby, where is bobby cherry dot internet bobby cherry dot internet is at go bobo g-o g-o-b-o-b-b-o at on twitter and bobby cherry on instagram and bobby cherry.com there you go and the newsletter uh inside.com slash pittsburgh please sign up for it there you go get bobby cherry in your inbox every day every day uh two days a week right now if we hit a certain threshold we can get uh bobby cherry in your inbox three days a week whoa go sign up go sign up and be i I believe i have signed up for it so i like it i'm just really bad at reading email (laughs) (laughs) we'll change that (laughs) there's so many many that know (laughs) many that know um and john jachilla and uh, dot, and uh, John uh, Tichilla at uh, dot internet is <laughs> Chilla uh, Chilla on the Twitters uh, ChillaTech dot net John Chilla on the Facebooks. Fantastic and Sorgatron dot internet is at Sorg actually Sorgatron dot com. Uh, <laughs> and uh, check out all of the great things going on. Um, no live Pittsburgh current this week. They're going to be doing it um, on their own somehow. I don't know. Uh, over at the Arts Festival, um, you know it, it hasn't rained all that much for being Arts Festival week. That's impressive. They've had some other things to worry about this week. Oh, so, really? Yeah. Let's keep them. Let's hope that it doesn't rain for them. Okay. They've had several thousand dollars worth of oh, art stolen. Right. Yeah. So Ref, they've had because, some some bigger things because nobody was hiring for rain. They had time to steal things. <laughs> um. So uh, a lot of great stuff going on. We got a lot of interviews happening with our indie wrestling side. Uh, our video game friend Brohemoth will be joining us Wednesday night at eight. Uh, on the re- probably the indie wrestling us streams, and uh, we'll be doing a couple interviews on Sunday afternoon as well. Uh, and I think that's all the broadcasting we're doing for the week. Uh, so, so we will be back here next Tuesday. I'll be here for a good long time. I'm not going anywhere until September. Uh, <laughs> the sort of booked the vacation for first time in forever. <laughs> Anyways, then we'll talk vacation tech with you, Chilla. Because you actually take vacations. Um, <laughs> I actually I'm not taking a any, like a beach vac. Well, I'm taking a I'm taking a bunch of long weekends. I'm not doing the typical. Would you beach vacation? Week-long. We'll we'll have a discussion about that. Thank you, producer Missy, for keeping everything together and let us know when Bobby actually was on the show. You got something to say? So you lean in. Oh, I was just I was sorry. <laughs> okay, it's time to the end of the show. Thank you. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.